Hi, this is Danny Ching, and today we're going to go over boards and paddles, balance skills, buoy turns, and stroke technique. The first thing you need to know about stand-up paddling is that in order to travel forward, the paddle plants and stays put in the water. And as you pull, you're going to move yourself past that point. Most paddlers have the misconception of they hit the water and they throw it behind them and they travel forward. This concept is going to apply to everything from the paddle design to stroke theory to balance and even your turns. So when starting stand up or when paddling for years we often get the question of which paddle is best for me. Well in order to answer that we're going to go over the parts of the paddle and how they work. And we're going to start with the T-top. Just about every paddle you see has a T-top on top and that's designed to give you the best leverage when you're paddling. Once you get past the T-top, you'll notice that several paddles are very different in just the shaft. On this one, this is an adjustable, you can move it up and down and it has a clamp so you can change the height of the paddle. This comes in handy when we're sizing our paddles for how tall we are, what type of board we're riding, uh, men, women and children all paddle with different size paddles. So these are very convenient. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is these are all straight shaft paddles. They have a straight shaft and some of the paddles on the market have a bend in them. The bend is for comfort, people paddle different and your hand position depending on how you place your paddle in the water will be different when you're looking at the straight shaft versus the bend shaft. So when you grab a paddle it's very nice to be able to try them out and you'll see which one works best for you. As we move on you can see that we have different blades and blade sizes. So one thing you'll find out is every paddle in the world manufactured today works. They all work a little bit different and they all feel really good at one point and really bad at the other. This is because as we went into earlier, in order to move a stand up board, you have to plant the paddle in the water and the paddle is designed to stick in the water. Then you move past that point and that's how you travel forward. Well every paddle is designed to stick really well and then at the end of the stroke it's designed to release really well. So you're essentially asking your paddle to do the opposite thing at the beginning and the end of the stroke. So, so the blade is designed to stick at the beginning and it's designed to release at the end. And if you look right here, I have three blades that are exactly the same shape, but they're all different sizes. The one thing you'll notice is the size of the blade affects how the paddle feels. The bigger blades, regardless of shape, stick in the water better. And as you'll see in our stroke theory and our stroke technique, sticking the paddle in the water and getting it to lock in is very important. However, every design feature, including the larger size blades that create that suction and that stick at the catch, also make the paddle feel a little bit heavier through the water and make it stick on the exit. As the blade sizes get smaller, you're giving up the ability for the paddle to stick in the water and not slip backwards during your pull, but you're gaining the sense of the paddle feels lighter through the water. And as you get to the smallest blades, we find that the paddles don't stick nearly as well, but they're super quick and light through the water and people love the feeling of that. Another design feature put into the blades is on the bottom of the blade. If you look at the bottom of most blades, they'll either be a combination of square or something round. When the paddles are more square, that means the paddle starts to go into the water and lock into the water sooner. This makes the paddles catch a lot more solid. Other than square on the bottom, you can also have round and a lot of paddle manufacturers like this round design. Now the problem with round is it doesn't set in the water as well as the square paddles. However, the nice thing about round is on the release, it's a much cleaner exit of the water and you're going to find that each paddler has their own preference on whether they want the catch to feel really heavy or they want the middle of the stroke and the back of the stroke to feel really light. 
and every paddle manufacturer fights over these two qualities and tries to design their paddle to fit you the best. Another design feature that most paddlers put into their paddle is whether to curve or scoop the tip or put a scoop in the back or keep it flat. What we found over the years is that anything that has a curve in it allows the paddle to lock in and get solid in the water sooner. Anything that has a scoop in the back, such as a cup or anything designed to have like a little scoop right here, that also allows the paddle to suction into the water a little bit better on the catch. As good as that is on the catch, it becomes an issue on the back of the stroke when you're taking the paddle out and trying to get that nice clean release is those suctions and those lips will start to lock in a little bit longer than you'd expect and they feel heavy and they create bubbles which cause cavitation and slipping creating you to paddle a little bit slower on the release. The opposite of a scoop or a lip is putting a perfectly flat smooth back on the back of the paddle and what this is for is it's really good at having that nice clean release on the back of the stroke. However, getting rid of the scoop or getting rid of the lip takes away from the catch. Now you're working on several different paddle features that have to work together in order to make the paddle stick in the water and release. And as you flatten out the back here, you get that clean release. When you look at most paddles, they have a very, very slight lip at the bottom, somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch, depending on the manufacturer, and they tend to be pretty flat on the back. And what you'll find is most paddle manufacturers have paddles that look similar. And that's because combining all the different features of these paddles, they tend to come out with something that works very well for everybody in just about all conditions. Now you can change those features and you can customize paddles to yourself or you can try out paddles that best suit you. Moving on and the final design feature we're going to talk about in the blade is the angle that the blade has on the shaft. Now a common misconception is to turn the angle backwards as you pull thinking you're going to get more leverage when in fact it's actually designed to go forward. What this helps with is everyone thinks it's reach, but as you plant the paddle and get it to lock in, that little bit of lip allows you to press down on the blade just enough before you start pushing and propelling the boards forward. So one of the most important drills you can do is called the set drill. And all it is is you're taking your paddle and you're setting it into the water and you're taking it out in the same spot. This allows us to find what our body position is when we take a stroke. Most paddlers don't ever take the time to find out where they want their body position to be when they pull. So if you can practice this a few times on each side, a couple on the left, and do a couple on the right, this is going to allow you to really start to figure out what the most efficient place for you to put your paddle in the water is. The basic body position for your stroke is the A-frame. As you can see, you're trying to make an A out of your body, and that's using your bottom arm nice and straight, and we actually reach towards the water. We use the shaft of the paddle, and we use our body position. This can also be called the triangle, as you make a triangle between your top arm, your bottom arm, and the paddle. Now the reason we do this is we're trying to get all the pressure from the blade to load up into your bigger muscles, and that includes your lats, your lower back, and even your legs. This will help prevent injuries because anytime we have a bend in our elbows, our wrists, or even our shoulders, these become weak points where the pressure will go through and it could possibly lead to an injury. So what we do is our body will naturally block with our hands out in front of us and this will give us the best opportunity for all the pressure from each stroke to go into our bigger muscles which will last a lot longer. So here are a few tips to help you with your A-frame positioning. First of all, you want your bottom hand reaching for the water and your paddle angled forward towards the front of the board. Second, you want to make sure that your top hand is directly over your bottom. When this happens, it's going to put you in an awkward situation. So what we're going to do is think about stacking our shoulders one on top of the other, and this will help you slide over and alleviate some pressure from your top shoulder. The third and one of the most important parts of this stroke is your top hand should be out in front of you blocking. It shouldn't have an elbow raised. When this happens, it puts pressure into your top shoulder and there's a possibility for an injury there. So remember, your top elbow should actually roll underneath and your top hand should be out in front of you protecting. This is gonna load all the pressure into your top lat. So now that we have our body position, the next step is to set your blade in the water. And unfortunately, this is the hardest part of paddling. We went over cavitation and how you have to plant the paddle and move yourself past it. 
Now we need to make sure that we plant the paddle going forward and at a forward angle. When this happens, it should feel like you're trying to plant the pa paddle through a male slot or like you're stabbing a fish. It goes forward and attacks this way. Most paddlers believe they slap the water backwards and that's how they go forward. And what ends up happening is you're wasting your energy in the air, but it feels really light. As soon as the paddle touches back here, you're only gonna go from here to wherever you pull the paddle out. So we wanna get maximum efficiency and maximum length on our catch. So you take the paddle and you set it going forward. When you do this, there are three ways to put the paddle in the water. The first one is the easiest one, and you take your hands and you stab it into the water. Another way I've learned to set the paddle that helps me is I actually come from the side and I'll slice the paddle in the water sideways and this will prevent me from pulling back too soon. So one thing you want to watch out for when you put the paddle in sideways is hitting the side of your board. It can and will leave marks. And finally, the last way I've learned to set the paddle is you actually hinge at the hips. Your hips will go backwards as your whole body falls forward. And I found this is the most powerful way to put your paddle in the water and it gives you the most stability. So a great way to practice setting your paddle is to do what I call a set drill. And the easiest way to practice this is on land since no one's scared of falling in the water. All you do is you start with your A-frame in a paddles up position as if you are about to take a stroke. And then at your convenience, you set the blade going forward into the ground. This is gonna allow you to practice just the part where you set your paddle. So you can see where your body position is comfortable setting your blade. This can also be accomplished in the water and it's the same thing. You set the paddle into the water, but you do not pull through the water. And all we're doing is we're finding our balance for us on our boards and where our paddles can reach. So now that we have our A-frame established, our top arm and our bottom position established, the legs need to be slightly bent. What happens when you bend the legs is you put all the pressure into your hamstrings and your lower back. When you do this, you also put yourself in the right position to have a nice, strong, flat lower back. If you straighten both of your legs, your natural instinct when you reach is to round your back and that's a potential for injury right here. So one way to prevent that is to bend both of your knees right on the catch and this is gonna put you in a nice, strong squat position. Now that we've established our A-frame and our catch, we go into body position with the legs and the hips. Now, one of the most important things to watch out for is when we reach forward, we will naturally reach with the same side hip. And what happens is this creates instability because you're making a line between your paddle and both of your feet. When this happens, you naturally become very unstable. So what we wanna do is counter that. Instead of turning our hips the same direction as our shoulders, we're gonna drop our hips back and to the other side. When this happens, you'll have the paddle and each of your feet lined up in a triangle. One tip that can help you with your body position, it's a little uncomfortable to have your feet parallel and to drop your hips to the opposite side, will be to take the same side you're paddling on and drop that foot back just a little bit. This is gonna make it easier to drop your hips to the opposite side of what you're paddling. So when you take a stroke, you'll be able to start from here and your hips will drop as you lean forward. And what this does is it creates a nice natural balance if you don't feel like you're falling over when you commit to the catch. Your hips and your timing are countering so that you still feel centered, and then once that paddle locks in and gets nice and solid, you'll be able to take your stroke and stand back up. Once we figured out how to set our blade, we then go on to how do we commit our body weight to the paddle. We're gonna allow our body weight to do most of the work for us, and the act of holding ourselves up is gonna propel us forward. Once we have achieved the proper body position, the goal is to set all of our body weight onto the catch. When the paddle goes into the water, it locks into place and we've positioned ourselves to be as strong and as powerful as possible. The goal is to take all of our body weight and set it down onto the paddle and not set all of our weight into our feet and onto the board. The analogy we use for this is similar to walking. When we go for a walk, we set our foot down and we shift our weight knowing the ground will be there. 
if for some reason the ground moves, we're going to have difficulties and we may trip and fall. When paddling, the paddle and the catch are your new foot and that's the act of placing your foot on the ground. So as we set the paddle into the water, we should be loading our body weight. The more efficiently you do this, the faster you can go and the less effort you will use. This is the equivalent of hanging on the bar for one second rather than doing a full pull up. As we load our body weight onto the catch and we shift all of our weight, we bend at the hips and set the blade. The act of pressing down on the paddle as you set the blade will actually hold and support your body weight upright. When setting your blade, we want all of our body weight to land on the paddle and the paddle will support us. You can see this happening from the side because the board stays perfectly level. If we lean forward too far too soon, we are very likely to commit all of our body weight onto the board. And when this happens, the board starts to bounce up and down. Once you've set the blade and committed all of your weight to the catch, now it is time to follow through and stand yourself back up. So once we plant the paddle, we want it to feel heavy and solid in the water. This means it's not going to make any bubbles and we're going to go as far forward as possible. Remember, if you make any bubbles, the paddle's moving backwards and you're not traveling forward. So we have our top hand in a nice strong blocking position. Our bottom hand is reaching down towards the water. We've bent our knees just a little bit and when we planted that paddle, our hips went out to the opposite side of the board. This gave us a little bit of comfort and allowed us to commit all of our weight to the paddle. Now it's really important that as you take a stroke and you drive through the water, your top hand stays over the bottom and outside of the board. If for some reason your top hand drifts in as you pull, you're going to lose a lot of your power and your leverage to the side and you're going to turn the board faster and sooner than you would like. So top hand over the bottom and that's at the start of the stroke and it needs to be there at the finish of the stroke. When trying to paddle fast or trying to paddle long distances, there are several trains of thought. If we're doing a very short sprint for a short period of time, one advantage is to bend at the knees or somehow find a way to stay very low. When you stay low, one, your center of gravity is lowered and it gives you much better balance and much better stability. Two is if you stay low and your body is doing less movements on the recovery, which is in between the strokes, you are actually significantly faster and more efficient at getting to the next stroke. And three, as we get shorter and closer to the blade, we can generate a lot more speed on the paddle. If you can generate speed on the paddle in a short amount of time, you're going to get a lot of acceleration. So by staying low, we can increase the speed of our sprints and our acceleration, but this comes out of cost of a massive effort. If we're traveling long distances, what you'll find is most paddlers will have a nice recovery time, which is the time in between strokes. It allows them to breathe, to reset their body, and to position themselves for the next stroke. If we're traveling long distances, this becomes very, very effective at maintaining efficiency. If you have time in between strokes to set up your body for the next stroke, then you are likely to continue on for a long period of time. So a great tip for those of you that are paddling long distances is the position of your bottom hand is going to affect your ability to paddle fast and or be comfortable. When you move your bottom hand up, you're going to look close the distance between your hands and you're going to lose some of the leverage on the blade. However, you're standing in a more upright position, a more comfortable position. I like to do this if I'm paddling really far or if I have a lot of speed already and it's not about going really fast right away. Now the opposite is true. If you move your bottom hand down and bend your knees a little bit more, you're getting closer to the water and you're getting in a slightly more difficult stance. However, because you're closer to the water, because your bottom hand's down and you're closer to the paddle, you can generate a lot more paddle speed